welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of an understanding that successful people don't get jealous, they get inspired. The truth is, when we see people possessing things that we want, whether it's a beautiful house, the perfect relationship, or having an amazing career, it can initially spark some negative feelings of jealousy. But at that point, we have two options to get jealous or to say, wow, good for them. Give them our blessings and get inspired by their success. By blessing others when we see them happy and winning, we actually in turn bless ourselves and bring that same energy back toward ourselves. The reality is there is no lack in the universe. There's enough resources for everyone to be abundant and flourish. Someone else's success does not take away from yours. Your time will come. Successful people use other people's success to get inspired and to learn from them and grow. Don't get jealous, get inspired to work harder and manifest your own abundance of blessings. As Ronald Valentino quotes, finding inspiration in the success of others is a common way to find motivation to follow through on your goals. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And I want to talk about email Santa because I know that it was inspired by your nephew who couldn't write a letter to Santa because of a strike. I think it was a post strike. So let's talk about that and the inspiration behind it. Oh, oh wait, wait a second. I've got a reindeer here. <laughs> <laughs> later, later, Dasher. Later, Dasher. I'll see you your parent later, okay? <laughs> He's busy so, doing an interview. Come back later. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Reindeer, they're so pushy. So I just happened to be talking to my sister and she mentioned this and the internet was new and young, just like I was at that time. And uh, so I thought, oh, that'd be something fun and easy to do. So I just kind of whipped something up and I sent her a link to it. And she, you know, put my nephew on it and he just went bonkers for it. He just loved it. You know, this letter magically appeared for him and it had all kinds of personalizations. You know, it said his name, it talked about the presence that he wanted because, you know, one of my little elves told me, you know, gave me a little hint <laughs> might like. So there was a response on that. Anyway, he was so excited. He could hardly wait until his older siblings got home from school. He was waiting at the door with his letter bouncing up and down, you know, holding this letter. Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Alan Kerr, the CEO of SantaChatter.com. This website was created in November 2021 using cutting edge AI technology to connect believers of all ages with Santa Claus during the socially distant COVID-19 pandemic. Alan, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Merry Christmas, Stereo. I'm very happy to be here. I mean, you must be getting ready to travel the world and deliver gifts, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, your company is such a fun idea. Let's talk about Santa Chatter. What is it? Well, it's just kind of a fun way for kids and kids of all ages to connect with Santa Claus during the pandemic. Uh, you know, there's been really tough times lately, both for the kids, because I get lots of letters from children saying how sad they are that they can't see Santa where they normally would at the mall or, or wherever. Plus as well, I've got quite a few Santa friends, or as I call them, stunt doubles, my stunt doubles, <laughs> who uh, are you know, kind of concerned about being out in public and being exposed to so many kids. So the idea came about as kind of a merging of those two when I realized that, well, I've been running my other site, emailsanta.com for 24 years, and there's tens of millions of letters from kids. So I have this big data set of information of what kids ask Santa and what Santa says back. So I thought, well, let's just upgrade this and uh, insert a little artificial intelligence and make <laughs> it uh, something really special. Yes, I know you have Al technology, right? So let's talk about the special technology that you have. <laughs> Well, you know, don't want to give any secrets away <laughs> because it is elf magic. But uh, I, I do rely, I hate to sound, make it sound like Santa's a fanboy of Microsoft here. 
but Microsoft came out with some really interesting technology just weeks ago. Like it's it's in preview or beta mode right now wow. is where it's at. But I just happened to notice it. And so it was really quite easy to use. So I just adopted it and uh, started using the, their AI. Uh, what their AI basically does is what the elves call it, it's probably or probably. <laughs> Because what it does, and we've added an extra little feature now to the Santa Chatter, where if you click on the microphone button, then you can actually speak. And Santa, or rather the AI, will figure out what it is that you're saying and convert it into text in real time. Wow. And then that will be shot to the North Pole as text. Mm -hmm. And the AI there, what it does is it goes, hmm, okay. So this little boy that said, R, the letter R, mm -hmm. yo, Snatra, <laughs> it will somehow figure out that what that boy said, or in that case, that's actually more like a typing with lots of typos, because that's what kids tend to do. Uh, we'll figure out that, well, that little boy wants to know, where is Santa? So then it will search through this huge data set that I've created to find out, okay, what's probably the best answer to that question? And then it will figure out, you know, okay, this one here, oh, that's probably not a very good answer. So it will say this one here, oh, that's like a 99% chance that that's probably a good answer. So that is what gets sent back to the child. Wow, very cool. I like that. <laughs> And I want to talk about Email Santa because I know that it was inspired by your nephew who couldn't write a letter to Santa because of a strike. I think it was a post strike. So let's talk about that and the inspiration behind it. Oh, oh wait a second. I've got a reindeer here. <laughs> <laughs> later, Dasher. Later, Dasher. I'll give you your turn later, okay? <laughs> He's busy so, doing an interview. Come back later. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Reindeer, they're so pushy. <laughs> so yeah that's kind of a like it's a bit of christmas magic mixed in with some internet magic the whole story um kind of in high, hindsight is how i say it but in 1997 boy it's a long time ago my little nephew he was the only one that was at home and he was quite upset because there was a canada post strike at the time so he couldn't send his physical letter we remember what those are mm -hmm. to santa claus so I just happened to be talking to my sister and she mentioned this and the internet was new and young, just like I was at that time. And uh, so I thought, oh, that'd be something fun and easy to do. So I just kind of whipped something up and I sent her a link to it. And she, you know, put my nephew on it and he just went bonkers for it. He just loved it. You know, this letter magically appeared for him and it had all kinds of personalizations. You know, it said his name, it talked about the presents that he wanted because you know one of my little elves told me you know gave me a little hint <laughs> might like so there was a response on that anyway he was so excited he could hardly wait until his older siblings got home from school he was waiting at the door with his letter bouncing up and down you know holding this letter oh you've got to do this you've got to do this and then my sister just said oh you know to her friends online way back when oh you know this was kind of fun you should try this and I mean, we didn't use the word back then, but it went viral. Wow. So there was about a thousand emails uh, in the course of a couple of weeks. Amazing. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, what are the most common questions that you get from the kiddos? And what kind of requests do you get? I'm always so curious. What's been <laughs> the most outrageous request that you've gotten? <laughs> Oh, you want to start with that one, huh? Oh, boy. Okay. How much time do we have? <laughs> we have a lot of time. <laughs> okay. Because when you live at the North Pole with elves, outrageous is kind of the, is every day. I bet. Uh, <laughs> there are so many things. Like I said, there's tens of millions of letters. Someday I'll have to write a book because they're just too good to keep to myself. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's, let's see, a 13-year-old boy wanted a parsnip. Oh. And, okay. <laughs> There was a 42-year-old woman in the United States, and her request was she wanted the legs of an 18-year-old. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Another woman in Alberta asked to be able to fit back into her bikini. Okay. 
So, you know, there's there's a lot. Oh, there was a cute one from a, a three-year-old. And uh, I can't show you the, the, the spelling of it, but I'll try to pronounce it. All she wanted for Christmas was her two front teeth. <laughs> Very nice. So you get people from all ages, clearly, not just kids. <laughs> oh, yes. And all the whole world, all around the world. Yeah, from the UK, from all over. Um, you know, there's there's really touching ones. They're they're funny. They're cute. Like there's a woman who wanted to be able to adopt her foster kids. Aww. And there was another child who wished that she could get adopted. Mm -hmm. So there's lots lots like that. Um, the very first year, there was a nine year old girl who asked for her uncle and her father and her brother back because they'd all passed away in the last year. Aww. So. Right from the very outset, I, I knew that, you know, there's things that kids share with Santa that they don't share with anybody else. So I've always made a point that in a case like that, they always get an extra special response back with a link to both the uh, a helpline phone number for their country, but also a special link to my email, to a, an email address I have so that, you know, they can reach out to me as well. But try, I basically try to send them back to the helplines because they're the ones that can really help them. So yeah. I get quite a few of those every year, but you know, there's a few of those, but most of them are, are just, you know, like it's a bit of an emotional roller coaster because you're laughing like crazy one minute and then the next minute it's a, it's a real tear jerker. Yeah. But that's the nature of it. You know, it's changed a lot in the last 24 years, you know, 24 years ago when the top presence was a Barbie doll. Yeah. And now it's like, no, I don't think so. It's all eye toys. Yeah, right? tell me about it. I, I've been getting my niece and nephew gifts and everything is, I think my nephew wanted a drone. <laughs> I was like, really? At 11 years old, you want a drone? So, I mean, yeah, it's all technology right now yeah. is what, what kids want. <laughs> yeah. Well, the elves live, you know, love flying around in the North Pole with their, oh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Claus. That's a uh, nice timing. Yeah, for, <laughs> for my, oh. a little milk and cookies here. Very nice. And you've had over 250,000 conversations. So what's been the best part of your job? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that question. I was, I've been thinking about it. I mean, there's so many ways I can answer it. But um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read an email that I got just, you know, hours ago um, from somebody who, who used the site. Well, I'll just read the email. Dear Santa, I used to write emails to Santa all the time when I was younger, and it's always been a highlight in my life. I'm 23 now, and life's pretty um, expletive, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I remembered this site and was able to be a little happier. If anybody sees this, thank you for keeping this site running. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So I think that kind of sums it up in a, in a lot of ways as to, to why I do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the best part of it is just getting those, I mean, they aren't all like that. A lot of them are much happier and stuff. But just once a year, I get this amazing view of the entire world experiencing Christmas. And it's uh, something I wouldn't trade the world for. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite special. Absolutely. I think it's amazing what you're doing because, as you said, there's a pandemic happening and kids have been at home. You know, they can't go meet their local Santa at the mall. So this is really special what you're doing. And I really commend you for taking the time to respond to emails and and to make Christmas special. You know, what does Christmas mean to you? What's your favorite part of Christmas and the holidays? <laughs> OK, you want the honest answer? <laughs> so, so Ooh, can... I see an elf. Oh, sorry, elf. <laughs> the, the elves are, you know, they're always popping in here, too. <laughs> they want airtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't really get to spend as much time as I'd like with my family. So the time that I do get to spend, you know, we have our own little traditions and, and things that kind of work around all my craziness. Um, so that's the special part is, uh, you know, just the, the time with family because it, it is fleeting. And I think everybody's come to realize that a little bit more in the last year or in a bit with the pandemic, how special life is and these special moments, how special they are as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone's 
come to realize the importance of family during this pandemic, right? Because materialistic things don't really matter anymore. It's more about the people you care about and, and surrounding yourself with, you know, loved ones. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's one of my favorite times of the year. So I, I completely agree with you. And for our viewers that want to get, you know, a letter from Santa, I know there's a few days before Christmas, you're going to be very busy. So just tell us how it works, uh, just for our viewers that don't know. Sure. Well, it's quite easy. You just uh, go to emailsanta.com or you can go to santachatter.com. And it's uh, for email Santa. Santa gets up to 10 letters a second Christmas Eve. So he's quite busy, but you know, if you can fly around the world in one night, answering a few million <laughs> uh, emails is nothing between cookie breaks and going down chimneys. And just, you know, tell Santa your name, just some general information, nothing personal, because Santa's very careful about that. He wants to teach children about the importance of internet safety. Mm -hmm. And click send, and Santa will reply fast as reindeer fly. <laughs> and do you guys do uh, video messages as well? Well, there's a choice. When you send your letter to Santa, you can get either just a straight response back on screen, or else you can actually see your letter magically sail through the internet to the North Pole where Santa's waiting for your letter. Mm -hmm. And that's our video response. And it can be personalized in the sense that you'll see your letter on the screen, on Santa's computer screen, or his fireplace notebook. <laughs> And uh, usually he'll, you know, wish you a Merry Christmas as he has to leave for whatever emergency happens to be coming up at the North Pole, like Clumsy the Elf unplugging the Northern Lights again. Uh, and then it, from there, you get to see your letter from Santa return back to you through the internet and it pops back up on your screen. Very nice. Very nice. Actually, my niece saw the letter and she, when you said her name, she was so excited. She was like, oh my God. How does he know my name? How does he know what I want? <laughs> so you made her day. <laughs>Jingle bells, I just got an email. Oh, and my magic snow globe tells me that it was sent by someone special. And there you are. Hello, and Merry Christmas. Oh, did you know that the elves shovel these out every day? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, I was wondering if you were going to send me an email. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Claus was just asking if I heard from you lately. Now I can say that you just sent us one. Oh, I love getting your emails. You know why? Because they always slay me. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. I can't wait to read your email so I can send you one in return. Let's go. Your letter is on its way, Kiera. Merry Christmas. And, you know, for all our viewers watching, what's one piece of advice that you'd share with them this holiday season, especially coming from Santa directly? It's, it's extra special. <laughs> well, I'd say just be kind to one another. Keep the spirit of Christmas in your heart. You know, throughout the year, I know it sounds cliche, but really just be a little extra kind to each other this time of year and through this entire pandemic. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Alan, thank you so much for being on the show today. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Um, thank you for doing what you're doing. I think it's really special and you're inspiring people and you're keeping the magic of Christmas alive. So thank you. I really commend you for doing it and keep it up, <laughs> keep it up. And I know you're gonna be busy, you know, delivering gifts <laughs> in the next couple of days. So don't tire yourself out, but thank you so much and happy holidays. <laughs> happy holidays, <laughs> Merry Christmas. From all of us here at Tag TV and the Daryl Roy Show, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.